Hello, my name is Rachel McIver Mori. This is the introductory video for Numbers and Colossians for those uh, going through the project of reading the Bible in a year. I serve as pastor at Northfield United Methodist Church. Uh, and so this video is for those of you who are at that stage on the journey. Um, today's video is about Numbers and Colossians and we're gonna start with the book of Numbers. Genesis and Exodus, which hopefully you've already had a chance to finish, are adventurous books. There's plot twists, there's villains, there's victims, there's heroes, and ordinary folks thrust into relationship with God. And if you made it through Leviticus, go get some Culver's or make yourself a cup of coffee or whatever it is you do to celebrate because that's awesome. It's a tough one. Um, Numbers is the fourth book of the Pentateuch, and uh, that, that is the first five books of the Bible. It's a fancy word for that. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So you're at book four of a five-book unit. Sometimes it's helpful to break it down uh, into smaller groups so that when you check off one unit, you can check that box and say, no, oh, I did it. Um, the name in Hebrews, uh, the name in Hebrew for the book of Numbers is actually not Numbers. If translated, it means wilderness. And that tells us so much about what place this book has in uh, the Hebrew Bible. Uh, the story parts of the book of Numbers are all about the people's experience in the wilderness. And they there are 40 years of wandering, and that's a long time to wander. And so as a consequence, uh, the people had all sorts of experiences of uh, deprivation, of food, of water, wanting to go back to Egypt. That's a big theme. Um, and you'll find out why they had to be 40 years in the wilderness uh, in chapter 13 or 14, and I will not spoil that for you. Now, there are some things that uh, I hope will stop you cold in the book of Numbers, because this whole book is about how a people came to understand themselves in relationship to God, to other people groups, to the promised land. And there are divine injunctions in the book of Numbers to wipe out whole populations of, of people. And there's even celebration of the slaughter. I hope that troubles you. I hope it stops you cold. This is a reason why we don't shy away from asking hard questions when we read the Bible. We have to have the honesty and courage to struggle with what it actually gives us instead of just skating over uh, the hard parts and getting to the, can't we just love everybody? Well, there's a lot here and we need to wrestle with that. I encourage you to make notes or write your questions as they come. They are important and worthy of consideration as you take this whole project very, very seriously. Now, Let's shift tones a little bit, uh, talking about the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians is actually a letter, and we find it in the New Testament, and it's a short book filled with very long sentences. In fact, most translations break up the sentences for ease of reading because uh, we just don't write that way now. Colossians is attributed to Paul, but most scholars do not believe that it is actually um, of Paul's writings. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. Part of it's the time of emergence, uh, but a lot of it is whether it has any language or ideas in common with other letters of Paul. And in fact, it doesn't. And in fact, uh, it's actually sort of at odds with some of Paul's notions. Specifically, uh, Paul believed that um, through uh, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we had uh, the kingdom was on its way, but it wasn't here yet. Colossians, it's pretty clear that uh, the writer thinks that what the resurrected life is right here and available to us all. So that's a that's a tension we find in, in a few different places in the New Testament. Um, additionally, uh, the question is uh, one of the questions at the center of the letter of Colossians is whether the life, death and resurrection of Jesus was sufficient um, to uh, give us access to God. And uh, the, the, the writer of the letter of Colossians is saying absolutely. And it has some pretty strong words for uh, what uh, he refers to as philosophies that we have to fast or have other wisdom or other teachings to, to get there. So that's, that's what really lies at the center of the book of Colossians. Now, there is another crack at a household code like we see in uh, Ephesians. Ephesians has more of them and Colossians is very short, but we need to take a good look at that and think through that because um, it, it contains things like wives be subject to your husbands. This is the book where that language comes from. And uh, even more horrifying uh, is the uh, injunction that slaves should be obedient to their masters. 
So there are some things in uh, this set of texts that should really stop us in our tracks, make us think, and make us ask hard questions. So good for you for doing that, and uh, keep up the good work. As always, there are three questions that can help guide your reading. One is to look for where God is in the story or the text that you're reading, and to be honest where you see and where you don't see God at work. The second is uh, to what name, what are the ideas or the language that are really hard or you don't understand or that are troubling and make a note of that and, and don't lose track of that question. And third is to name what in my life or what's going on in the world that seems connected to what is happening in the text. So that is all for now. Uh, good luck and happy reading.